Hi, and welcome to Doodle Therapy, a interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live. And this is our very special grand finale stream. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm your host, Alice. I am a muralist and artist based in San Francisco. And if you're new to the stream, welcome. Um, you know, it's a really special couple streams today because it's going to be one of our final streams after a year and a half of doing digital therapy here on Adobe Live. Um, so I am super excited and hi to everyone who is joining us in the chat as well. Um, so I first want to say welcome to our special guests because this is a uh, final, you know, season finale stream of ours. Um, we have not just one, but two guest artists today with us uh, as part of like an encore performance since they've been here on Doodle Therapy in the past. So please join me in welcome, welcoming Catherine Madden as well as Amy Wibowo. Welcome, guys. Hello. Yeah, it's great to have you guys on. Um, so, oh, and thanks to everyone um, saying hi in the chat. So um, if you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself, share where you're joining us from. Um, and our random question of the day is related to our doodle stream topic, um, which is dream projects. So we would love to know what is a project that you have always wanted to work on that dream passion project or side hobby or, you know, TikTok hobby that you've, you know, saw once on TikTok and now you want to get into it. Like that thing that you've just always wanted to make time for, but never quite had. We'd, we'd love to know. Um, because if you're new to the stream, the way that uh, doodle therapy works is we, uh, every week we're on, we have a different doodle prompt um, that's usually related to the guest artist's area of expertise. So in the past, we've done comics with Deb Lee, children's book illustrations with Anusha Sayed. Um, but today, since this is one of our last streams on doodle therapy, at least till the end of the year, um, we wanted to keep it more open ended. So our prompt is to work on a dream project. Um, whether that's, again, something that you've just always been wanting to make time for or that new hobby that you've wanted to pick up on. So let us know if, um, you know, there's a dream hobby of yours and we will all be answering that question and working on dream projects of our own this stream. Um, so I want to uh, head over to the um, drawing board here and show some of Amy and Catherine's uh, work here on the screen. Would you guys mind sharing a little bit about yourself? Tell us, you know, where you're joining us from, answer our random question of the day, and maybe Catherine can go first. Yeah, uh, I am Catherine Madden. I am joining from San Francisco, which is occupied Ohlone territory. And I'm so glad to be back. Thanks for having me, Alice. Um, I guess my dream project that I'm bringing today is related to um, this upcoming studio show that you and Amy and I will be participating in in a couple months. And um, it's an exploration of two different fascinations of the year for me, uh, one of which is just like fiber art and playing with uh, weaving, embroidery, sashiko stitching, and natural dyes. And some of the work that you see on the screen right now, one of them is a locker hooking exploration I did with some wool and uh, the second fascination, which is tide patterns and moon phases and natural cycles. And um, I have plans to hopefully just curate a collection of uh, some fiber art that relates to moon phases and tide cycles for the show. And so when we get into, you know, what I'm going to work on today and when we switch over to the drawing screen, I can talk more about what I'm going to focus on. Yeah, I love it. Um, can I have, make a quick note to our studio tech manager, Jeffrey, uh, would you mind and upping the music in the background a little bit. Thanks. Um, so Amy, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're joining us from, what you're all about? 
Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Amy Waboo. Uh, thanks, Alice, for having me back again on Doodle Therapy. Um, it was super fun when I did it before, so I'm excited to be on here again. Um, so I am a creative technologist uh, based in San Francisco, like Catherine said, um, occupied Ohlone land. Um, and um, I love the intersection of um, tech and art. And um, so some of the designs that Alice has shown on the screen are um, a, a t-shirt design I drew, um, get it girl, which makes a pun about version control. And also um, uh, over the pandemic, I built um, this frog shaped computer um, from laser cut pieces that I designed in CAD. Um, so cute. And Thank you. The dream project that I'm currently working on is um, I've been getting into plants and ceramics um, and I've been taking some um, ceramic classes at a local studio. So um, I have incorporated some 3D printing and ceramics um, as well as in collaboration with uh, Alice, uh, who painted these, but I um, have this little planter that um, I 3D modeled, 3D printed, and then slip cast, um, and then Alice painted. And, Cute! Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be uh, painting some uh, ceramics that I fired. Love it! And for those who don't know, that is Zucker, who is a um, octopus in octopus character in Animal Crossing. He's actually a taco yaki, so octopus. So he has like the sauce on his head and a toothpick. Um, so super cute. And um, I just wanna say welcome to everyone who is joining us live. Um, welcome to our fearless moderator, Sam, who is awesome and has been moderating with us for the last year and a half. Um, Shirley, Anna, Reverb Mike, uh, familiar faces. Tara, hello Tara. Um, Kim Ang, who says they just found Doodle Therapy. Um, Susan, aka Mint. Um, Paula, welcome in everyone, yay. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited for this uh, today's stream. Um, so we're gonna hop over here to the drawing board um, and share a little bit about what we're gonna work on. Uh, Catherine, do you mind telling us a little bit about you know what you're up to here? Yeah. Um... As mentioned, you know, the prompt in thinking about dream projects and our upcoming studio show um, had me sort of looking back on the year and thinking about what I've created so far and what I might be able to, you know, continue to completion. Um, that's a constant struggle of mine, but <laughs> there's two projects that I finished so far, one of which is this um the locker hooking series. It's like three pieces that, um, you know, it's like the moon phases and the tide for each day and one day of like the most significant, um, like high and low tide for that day. And then I did a weaving of my like 2020 experiences as a reflection looking back. And I also have an embroidered um, sort of like improvisational piece and so i've been collaging everything else that i want to sort of bring into the show or pieces that i could blend with some additional stitching so all of these are different natural dyed scrap fabric that i had around the house and i'm thinking maybe i'll take some of my um different frames and you know overlay them and imagine on my iPad here like what's possible for overlaying in terms of stitching you can see I've already done a little bit of stitching on this block printed fabric oh cool yeah, yeah. this is Sashiko and I actually might take these stitches out because I'm I think I'm gonna think about like overlaying for each day of this moon cycle um, oh. a stitch pattern that shows the waves for each one of those days. So I'm probably going to go into um, a more detailed view of that, but these are like the, the menu of options I could explore. And I'm hoping to just like, you know, doodle therapy today, play around, yeah, go where my curiosity takes me and explore, you know, really the, the function of today is like, 
sketching what I might want to do in a physical analog space. So like it, you know, I would map out what might it look like if I added some stitching on top of this. And then tomorrow when I'm not on screen, I will probably do some stitching instead of iPad drawing. Love it. Thanks for sharing that. It's cool to see you go from digital to analog. Cause I feel like for a lot of us in the illustration slash tech spaces, we're going from the opposite from like analog, like a sketch on a piece of paper to a digital illustration. So, but I, I personally think after spending so much time on the computer that it's really fun to use it as a tool to then make more things with your hands. So that is really exciting. Um, and so, you know, for those who are just joining us on Doodle Therapy for the first time, um, the way that the stream works is we have a different prompt every week and you as the viewer are totally invited to draw along as well. Usually there's like a technical lesson that kind of goes along with it. Um, but today, since this is our final stream, uh, along with tomorrow, um, and the prompt is really open-ended, it's just to work on something that has been your dream project for some time. Um, you know, it's just whatever is meaningful to you. You can, it, let's just spend the next hour and carve out a little bit of time in our busy schedules and just do that together. Um, and that's kind of been the ethos of what I've been trying to share with Doodle Therapy, um, which is just, even though we're all really busy and we have different pressures on us, um, let's just carve out a little bit of time to like draw together and have fun. Um, so I'm really excited for what I'm going to be working on today. Um, going along with Catherine's textile theme, I recently bought a tufting gun, which is uh, like a gun that uh, it's like a machine that um, you put yarn in it and then it like tufts a uh, rug type of thing um, on this like loom that you have to set up. Um, and these are some examples of tufted rugs. Um, there's different types of like stitches, but just to keep it simple, um, you know, I'm just going to start with the most simplest um, type of approach, which is just with my good old uh, tufting gun. So um, for example, there's this amazing artist named Cynthia who does these like Asian snack rugs, um, which are so cute that you can see here. Uh, and then there's a, a lot of artists that I've found on places like Etsy or Instagram. Um, and they do a lot of like really cute, um, tufted rugs. Some of them are small, so they might be like accent pieces for your room. Um, so I basically am treating it like these are illustrations that someone has made and you can then turn them into rugs. Um, and in particular, I uh, have this mirror in my studio that I want to turn into, like I want to create a frame for it. Um, so that's going to be my tufted rug project. Um, and I think it'll be fun to make an illustration that will eventually live in my space and not just live on my phone or computer or screen. Yeah. So yeah, let's, uh, let's can't wait dive in. To oh, sorry. What that. I can't wait to see that mirror. Are you talking about the studio that we share? Uh, yes. Yay, yes. I can't wait to see it. Yes. So also a little bit of context, um, Amy, Catherine and I, we are all part of a studio space in the mission district of San Francisco called Lavender Labs. So, um, for this stream and for tomorrow's stream, it's just going to be like studio vibes. And we do a, a we used to do an, a regular like monthly thing called Crafter Noon, uh, more so before the pandemic started, where we would like invite a bunch of friends to our studio and we would just craft and everyone would bring a little like project and share with other people. Like we've done um, gold foil printing for your um, illustrations. Catherine has done like ink marbling. I saw in the other room, just like watercolor jewelry making. So it's a lot of fun. And I think it's um, kind of interesting that all three of us are working on craft related projects. So this will just be another um, crafter noon for us in um, in the uh, doodle therapy. And um, to answer your question, Sam, I am sorry. Yes, there is a random um, bass tone um, that is unfortunately an audio issue that um, 
we have. So sorry about that in advance. We will we will turn the music up a little bit, and、uh, hopefully he won't be able to hear it.、Um, oh, and thanks to、uh, previous guest Laura for joining us. Everyone should check out Laura's new book,、um, which has been released for pre-order. And Devin Co, our friend, friend of the stream.、Um, it's great to see see everyone. Yay!、Uh, okay, cool. So let's just jump in.、Um, I'm gonna start.、Uh, so I've I've created some of these sketches of like rugs that I might potentially want to have. Just whatever brings me joy in my space.、Um, so I think I'm just gonna start. You know, drawing this、uh, drawing this mirror rug, and then we'll see. You know what it ends up looking like.、Um, how about yourself, Catherine? How are you approaching what you're working on right now? Did quite a bit of setup. Leading up to、uh, this doodle therapy,、um, what I'm thinking is with this、uh, block print that I've done on this sheet of linen,、uh, it has sort of a snaking pattern of new moon to full moon,、uh, you know, iterations of the moon. And I think、uh, I'd like to put it, put specific dates on it. And I did some research, and I'm really interested in this concept of king tides, which are basically when the Earth is in syzygy with the Moon and the Sun. It creates、syzygy. like these really extreme tide events, and it'll be like super high highs and super low lows, and they're actually. Used as like an indicator for what it will look like、uh, when it's the super high tide, like after、oh. um, you know, like a few more years of rising sea levels. And so I picked、uh, a start date of December fourth, twenty twenty one, which is like the last king tide of this year. Is、That's、that like a special、birthday. date? Yeah, I love that. So、wow. actually, that is like going to be a big king tide date, and maybe you can plan something around.、Uh, it's for those in like the California area.、Um, there should be some really good like during the low tide period, like tide pool、uh, exploring、oh. to do, and then during the high tide period. Obviously, you don't want to be. <laughs> Where you were exploring the tide pools, you、right. want to make sure you find your way to higher ground.、Um, Definitely. But、um, anyway, I pulled in these photos from this tide log book that、um, I love this imagery and I love how much information is、oh. on each one、yeah. of the, the days. So you see the high and the low and、um, where the moon is and the sky and all of this information. But I think what I'm going to do is sort of trace these shapes, and then fit them into the you know part of the grid that is associated with the the day, and then think about maybe the stitching pattern that goes into it、um, that I want to play with when I get back onto the fiber itself. So love it. I'm going to do some tracing and yeah. Imagining、yeah. our future. <laughs> yeah, and Amy is、um, painting off screen. So the way that this works is, since there's two streams this week, today and tomorrow,、um, Catherine will be streaming her project today, and then Amy will be streaming her project tomorrow, and then all three of us will be, you know, hanging out,、um, you know, in a row and just chatting about life. Um, so, yeah, you know, one thing that I thought would be fun to reflect on is we. So we started doodle therapy、um, a year and a half ago.、Uh, I pitched it to Adobe in March 2020,、um, right when everything was like shutting down and getting canceled. And then the idea was that we would just come together and draw because, and hang out and just have a little community because it just felt like we were all so isolated from each other.、Um, and this year, this past year and a half, has been really, really hard、um, for everyone.、Um, And I'm just curious, like, if you guys have any reflections on the last year and a half、um, that we've really had to change our 
behaviors and lifestyles in, um, but maybe you got to like learn something new about yourself or try things that you wouldn't have normally tried. Like, I don't think I would have bought this um, like tufting gun and like tufting setup because I basically saw a bunch of TikToks about people tufting in their houses. And then I was like, maybe I'll buy a tufting setup as well. But like, if I were, if it weren't the uh, pandemic, I probably wouldn't just be like watching, t like going down the TikTok rabbit hole of um, tufting videos. So yeah, I'm just curious, like how, how has this last year and a half been for both of y'all? Nothing like starting with a light question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been talking a lot. Amy, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite a year. I feel like even though it's been tough for me, I feel like I've been relatively privileged and lucky in my situation. I work for myself and I work from home, so not much has changed about my work situation. Um, and then um, I think the biggest thing that has changed for me during the pandemic um, is that I've um, been giving myself a lot more compassion about my mental health and also um, kind of like realizing how much of a push um, society and capitali capitalism has for us to be productive all the time and that yeah. um, it's fine if all I do in a day um, is like give myself a little bit of a break, do some reading, and if I have to take a mental health day, that's totally fine. Um, and then also while recognizing the privilege of being able to take mental health days and being able to afford that. Totally. Yeah. Very, very true and resonant. Yeah. A lot resonates with me about what you said, Amy. And I feel like um, in addition to feeling really grateful for having flexibility and freedom with like my work situation and um, yeah, like just uh having self-compassion. Um, I've learned a lot about boundaries this year um, and communication and transparency. Uh, it's just so fascinating how different folks have different comfort levels. And, you know, we just owe it to each other to, I don't know, just be clear about what you're cool with and what you're not and that's really hard so I feel like that's been a growth area for me and interestingly I haven't really seen much of a reflection of that that's more just like personal life and less about like creative pursuits um but I, I feel like there's another um I don't know interest that has continued from pre-pandemic but is further ingrained in me a related to what I'm working on now, which is simply appreciation for place and ritual and routine. Like I have a ritual mm. of going to the same place every low tide and high tide. It's Fort Funston, which oh. is like a dog beach. And um, yes, many doggos. Yes, it's so lovely. And uh I go during low tide and I run with my dog and, you know, I felt like so threatened when the beaches and parks were closed early on. And I just, the rebel in me was like, you can't stop me. And so I like went anyway. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, I don't know. It's been a, a, a real, soothing, saving ritual or routine to have, you know, just like staying in connection with, you know, the world just keeps spinning, the moon keeps orbiting the earth and I'm still here. And thank goodness everyone I love so far is 
made it through this pandemic. But what about you, Alice? Yeah, I mean, both of what you're saying is super resonant. And um, I think one one thing that uh, what you said made me think of is I've thought a lot about how um, places are so tied, like having places to go feels like it's tied to having a sense of purpose almost in my like day-to-day life. Um, For example, this whole thing kind of reminds me of when I, uh, obviously not like in a one-to-one way, but there, you know, there's just parallels. I'm not trying to compare a pandemic to some other thing, but um, it, it feels a little resonant to when I quit my job and I like went freelance for the first time in that I didn't have like places to go anymore. Like I was at my home and I like kind of had to restart my like schedule and like restart my whole life. And it was really scary for me. Um, And I like kind of spiraled a little bit in the beginning um, of both going freelance and the pandemic, just because um, I didn't realize, and I had to like relearn again, how much I tied having a sense of like purpose with just having a place to go. Like knowing that I could like walk to the studio and then like get a coffee here and have this meeting to go to and see these friends here. I felt like um, replacing that with the online stuff. um, It was really nice to be able to catch up with people and stay in touch that way. But the, the thing that I felt missing was just those little moments and just like walking somewhere or like go like having a place to go to you know and i I don't know if this is coming out right but um yeah i just realized how important like places are and i think part of this was because um during the pandemic i was kind of uh um in between like apartments like i moved out of my apartment i was like with my staying with my boyfriend for a while and we just moved into like our first apartment like intentionally Um, and that has been a really big shift in my own mental health to feel like I have a space that is like mine. And yeah, it just goes back to the whole place thing. And I think, um, one thing the pandemic has done for a lot of people is it has stripped us of the places that are part of our routines and Mm -hmm. you're left with only like one place, which is like where you live and like sleep. Um, but, uh, you know, now we've just all had to like adapt to uh, make that also a place for other things like work and and exploration and play too. So I think that has been kind of hard and but it's been helpful to realize that. So, yeah, hope this isn't too much of a downer, by the way, it's just uh, real talk, I guess. Yeah, it's really good to reflect and not just, you know, the biggest fear that I had early on is like, are we all just going to when this feels like when things feel safe again, are we all just going to go back to normal and like continue grinding and like have these priorities that I'm personally rethinking. And uh, so I'm glad we're talking about it because it's easy to get, uh, you know, pulled back into the frenzy. Yeah. Totally. And I also want to just take a quick aside and say welcome to Catherine, aka Mary Drop, and Ivy Chen um, for joining us. They said that they also want to try punch needling after seeing their friend make rugs. And if you're just joining us now, um, for some context, I'm working on designs for a rug that I'd like to punch needle um, or tuft that will go around um, this mirror that I have as a frame. Um, welcome to Robzilla. Robzilla is a um, uh, beloved streamer here on Adobe Live. So welcome, Rob. Um, and Paula Zimmerman says, "Ooh, their dream project today is inspired by my fish. Um, they love the curvy shapes, and later they will add bright colors." Yes, love these fishies. I have some fish behind me as well, as you can see. Um, so that's cool. Hey. Um, I'm curious, have you guys, have you guys adapted to like not being able to go into the studio regularly? Like I I know you guys have um, been working from home. Have you guys had to change your, your setup? Like how has that been for you? Um, 
So I put a lot of energy into um, kind of beautifying and organizing my home office just because I knew that I was going to spend a lot of time there. Um, so I have been working with an organizer like remotely over Zoom um, and kind of like categorizing different items, deciding which ones I want to keep, um, which ones I want to donate. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with how my office space is looking so far as a result. And it's um, been uh, nice to have a studio away from the studio, even though I still miss the studio a lot. Yeah, I miss the studio a lot too. It's uh, it's just nice to have a space that's just for for crafting and and all that. Um, oh, uh, Rob says, "Miss you, Alice Boba Tea." Yeah, let's get boba. We have to get boba sometime. When uh, I I feel like my boba tastes have improved a lot during the pandemic because I now take the time to get boba, and I feel like what my recommendation was to you for the best boba in SF has dramatically changed. So next time you're here, we'll have to get the true best of the best for local boba. What would you say the true best of the best is now? Ooh, good question. Uh, my favorite, okay, so before I would say, I would have said, let's go to boba guys, because that was like the closest, I would say decent boba um, in my neighborhood. It was like a proximity thing. Now I, I know how to drive and I have a car, so I would take us to um, possibly like Teaspoon, which I don't know if they have an SF location. Like it's more of a do. South Bay thing. They do? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. where is their SF uh, location? Um, I, I wanna say it's like um, Knob Hill area. I'm, I'm actually oh, pretty bad at SF geography, but mm -hmm. um, our friend Mint in the chat has had an art show at their SF location. What? Yeah. Oh. What? Are you serious? That's like the dream. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so cool. Um, awesome. Well, congrats Mint for the teaspoon art show. That's awesome. Uh, uh, really strange deja vu right now. Like why? I don't know. I feel like we had this conversation before where you found out that Susan did a show at a boba sh shop. Oh. <laughs> Very well, specific I know she, deja vu. <laughs> I know she did a, a show in LA that was at a shop. Yeah. Ice cream shop, yeah. yeah. Ice cream, yeah. Um, or maybe we're in the Matrix. Every time I, I think of deja vu, I, th I think of the cat, the cat scene. Um, like, uh, welcome in to Kieran Lewis from London, who just tuned in. Um, and, oh, Kim says they just got teaspoon in LA. Lucky, lucky you in LA. You, you guys have like all the best food. Um, and Devin wants to know, how did I learn how to drive? Well, that was an arduous process. Um, basically, I never learned how to drive when I was young because I was like, I think I was just really intimidated by it. Um, I'm I'm young for my grade, so when everyone was learning, I wasn't able to. And then I and then when I was eligible, I had to take the class with like all the juniors. So I was like, oh, that's like so lame, you know? Um, like I had to take driver's ed with you know all the all the younger uh, students. So I just never learned how to drive. Um, and then I went to school in Philly, so not really a need for a car there. Um, and then moved right out to SF after graduating. So, um, but but recently because of the pandemic that I think that has accelerated my need to finally learn how to drive and just be a little bit more independent, um, just like moving around and stuff. Um, Catherine, you drive, right, in San Francisco? When when did you learn how to drive? I just followed the, uh, I, I, unlike you, I was like desperate for the freedom of a car and driving 
as soon as I could. So when I turned however old you need to be to get a permit, um, and then, you know, hopefully, as, or I assume like as quick as I could, I did all the courses and stuff, but <laughs> I've had a bit of a rocky driving experience given, uh, like just a few accidents <gasps> when I was That's young. That's so scary. Yeah. Um, Humera says driving gives them anxiety, especially in Scotland. Um, Devin had a driver's license, but lived in big cities for years. So basically forgot how, and Kim grew up in SF. Oh, cool. Um, so they learned how to drive after they graduated from college. Um, oh, and Kim wants to know the best boba places in SF. Um, I really like Yi Fong as well. They have a spot in Cupertino. I know I'm not sure about the rest of the Bay area, but I'm certain they must, they must have given the, uh, demand for it or if they do open up a spot elsewhere in the bay area there is a, there is a there is demand um yeah i mean i was when i learned how to drive i was actually really scared um because uh it is it is kind of a dangerous activity if you, if you think about it um but everyone just like does it seemingly so naturally so i remember like the first time i went for a drive by myself i was like so anxious and I was like sweating. Like I was, I was mm -hmm. so scared. Um, Alice, I'm interested in continuing the driving conversation, but I have, a, uh, I'm at a point where I would like some feedback. Um, oh yeah. So, uh, I finished the first row of just sh line shapes. You can kind of see them. They sort of blend in with my stitching, but I'm getting to the second row. And what's interesting is that until now, I've been moving from left to right. But in the second row, I'm going to move from right to left. So my question is, should okay. I should I flip like my, um, my, my imagery? I'm trying to like actually select the Saturday, oh, December see. 18th image. Should I flip all of these so that they move in the opposite direction? Um, I guess it, it depends oh, so on how much I want people to like, uh, actually be able to see something in this and like connect it to real data, which it's more about the shape, but so you're wondering if you should f basically flip the row, the second row, so it reads as left to right, or if you should keep it as is, so it reads more like a circle. Actually, like a uh, yeah, the, the second row would be right to left instead of left to right. Um, yeah. So I would basically have to flip each one of these oh. as well. You know, I think like you should a, keep it the way it is. Okay. Yeah, because I like how it it's very clear, like it's a continuation of the last item in the first row. Yeah. And then when you flip it, you'll be like, wait, why did it flip? Yeah, the shape of the thing is gonna stay more consistent if I don't flip it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Devin says the first time they drove, they drove their dad's car straight into a bush. That's very scary. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think I've had a driving accident yet, but I've definitely like parked, like I've, I've driven someone else's car, like my dad or my sister's car, parked, saw like a giant scrape on the side of the car and like freaked out for 15 minutes before finally getting in touch with the owner of like my dad or sister. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's from a long time ago. So that has definitely happened. Um, and so, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left in our stream. So I do want to take the time to, um, on my screen up here, um, to show you guys the Doodle Therapy website, which you can find at bialislee.com slash doodle dash therapy. Um, since we're basically going on hiatus for the next, uh, for the rest of the year, um, you know, and maybe we'll be back in different forms in the future. Uh, this is where you can find all of the past doodle therapies. Um, if you are an 
looking for some doodling or co-working type of streams to um, watch. So I've just put up all of the past guest streams. Um, there's some fun little uh, Easter eggs, for example, if you hover, there's this like sparkle effect. And also, um, whenever there's a stream with an animal in it, I've put this dog emoji uh, next dog icon next to the person. So if you are a dog lover, you can oh. find all the dog streams. Uh, like like uh, Nick had two corgis in his streams that uh, were walking around the background. Um, and then if you click in, um, you'll be able to find both streams um, from each guests and you know, usually there's some really interesting lesson or theme that we covered. Like this one with Nick, we it was adventure landscapes. Um, you can see Nick's beautiful final piece here. He is a speed wizard, uh, very fast. Um, and you can also see some of the community submissions that have come in from the last year and a half of doing doodle therapy. So thank you to everyone who has um, submitted your wonderful art. Uh, we have Catherine on here as well uh, from her stream that she did with us uh, earlier this year. So yeah, that's where you can find um, doodle therapy archive is at this website by alicelee.com slash doodle dash therapy. And we hope to be back in the future in different formats. Um, who knows? I've, I've wanted to do, to make some kind of like doodle therapy journal. I think that'd be fun. Um, I do, I do think that if I did that, I would want to partner up with like maybe my therapist or something and kind of make it more of a, um, therapeutic kind of, uh, book. So yeah. And, uh, tomorrow will be our final stream, uh, again with Amy and Catherine. Although next time, uh, Amy will be the one who will be streaming and we'll be working on, um, stuff related to our ceramics project together. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. And I also want to take this time to shout out to Amy and Catherine for joining us. Um, you know, you can follow them at their uh, usernames, which are above their heads. So Catherine is Cat Mule, Amy is Taylor HG, and I'm by Alice Lee. Um, if you're watching this after we do this live and you have questions or you want to share your dream projects with us, um, feel free to share it with us on all the socials. Um, it always makes my day when I see people sharing their doodles with us. So, yeah. Wow, Alice. Hmm? First of all, time flies during doodle therapy. Time flies. I can't believe there's only 10 minutes, but also uh, congrats on- Thanks. Yeah. Um, oh, and I guess, I guess if anyone's wondering, um, we're just ending because I'm just taking a little step back from streaming. It's not like anything bad or anything. Um, it's just that like sometimes you just need to take a little break and come back refreshed, even for the good things in life. Um, this is definitely a very good thing. So it's a bittersweet feeling, but it's like way more sweet than it is bitter because I got to make so many new friends, um, got to meet so many guest artists and I also got to um, meet so many of you guys in the community and um, yeah that has been really nice. Yeah, I wanted to thank you Alice because I remember last year um, doodle therapy and tuning into your show and drawing along with everyone was definitely one of the highlights of my week whenever it happened. Oh thanks! One cool thing about this project is it's been a pretty long running for me project. Um, like it's been a year and a half of doing it. And that's on the longer side for me in terms of like collaborations or client projects. So I'm curious for you guys, um, in terms of your projects that you work on, how do you usually approach them in terms of like time commitment? Do you guys usually have longer projects, shorter projects? Um, and how have you found, you know, longer term versus shorter term projects to be um, I, I have found this longer term project to be really rewarding because it, it's just aged like a fine wine and it just mm. gets better over time as you become more comfortable with it. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious, how do you guys, uh, approach that? Uh, I just wrapped up, I, over the years I've gone from really short term, like I would, I would, a lot of my services like three or four years ago were like. 24 hour gigs and I loved that because I would be like whoa 
I would show up, I would draw live, I would do live sketch noting, and then I would, you know, like spend a couple hours after an event polishing it and then deliver it and be like, that's it. I don't change it. It was, it served the purpose in the moment and uh, we're not, this isn't, the, the point of this work isn't to make it perfect. Um, mm. And since then I've sort of transitioned because that was really grueling and a lot of extra like admin work, just like with onboarding new clients and contracts and all that stuff. So it, like, it was hard to make it worth it after a while. I see. Um, yeah. And uh, now I just wrapped up a project that started in March and it, um, I finished my role, but the team is still working on it for a launch of a report in uh, early next month. And that is a test of endurance, like working on one thing for me personally, one thing for like multiple months and uh, constantly iterating on the same thing. I think um, longer term for doodle therapy, I think that would be something that's really cool because you get the variety within the structure of like the sameness of the stream, but yeah, only doing one thing for six months is too long for me, but I see. I'm learning yeah. as I go. How do you, for that project, I know what you're talking about, um, for the report project, mm -hmm. are you allowed to share? Oh, you don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a report for Bill and Melinda Gates and it comes out in mid September. <laughs> Exciting. Yeah. Um, so for like that project, for example, you've worked on it um, for mul multiple years in a row, plural yep. years in a row. Um, so how do you find, how do you make sure that it continues to challenge you? I'm sure each year is different. There's different stories and different um, challenges in telling those stories. But how yeah. do you, as like the like creative, like lead and, and art director, uh, if I'm getting that correct, how do you yes, like make sure of. you're being um, challenged and like kind of have a fresh new um, growth opportunity with with uh, yeah. each each report? Well, I think by the nature of just the challenge, changing environment, I haven't had to intentionally build that in to my own like practice, I guess. Um, the first year we did this work, it was in person. And then there's been a lot of like, you know, obviously we had to shift to a virtual and there was a lot of learning involved in that. And then um, the team has changed a lot. So there's a lot of new personalities. And so there's always growth in like meeting new people and learning how they work and figuring out the best rhythms and structures and you know like collaborative approaches you know because everyone's different and has different preferences so uh things are just changing beyond what i have been able to control and i guess it's a good practice in like rolling with it and riding riding the waves if you will as i'm drawing yeah waves. yeah totally <laughs> That's cool. How about yourself, Amy? Um, I guess, so this past year, I got officially diagnosed with ADHD and it has explained a lot of stuff um, in my life to me, but I um, get really excited about new things easily. So I think I, um, I hop around to a lot of different projects and ideas frequently, uh, which makes uh, doing doodle therapy for one and a half years, even more impressive to me. But yeah, I feel like um, I'm constantly trying new things or even if I'm doing um, something similar to what I've done before, I try to change it up a bit or like add uh, a different or interesting element. So I feel excited and challenged about it. Um, but yeah, I, I love doing new things constantly. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of your projects, I feel, have a pretty long tail just because um, you work on a lot of products and physical products just, they just take so much longer. But I think it's 
in a rewarding way. Like I love being able to hold the thing you made in, in my hands, but it does take so much longer because it's like, there's the art piece to it, but then there's like also the production and then the sales and then fulfillment and all of that. So I find that to be extremely impressive. Um, oh, thank you. I think yeah. it helps that every step in the process is really different. So even though it might take a year to go from a design to like shipping it out um, to my store customers, um, every single step involves something different and involves new challenges. So I think that that um, keeps me uh, engaged and interested. Yeah, yeah, there's, I think there's like a lot of endurance for sure related to, uh, related to keeping a project like that continuing. Um, Ivy says tuning in this past year has been really inspiring. Um, they tend to ho hobby hop a lot. So having something consistent has been really nice. Me too, I hobby hop a lot. Like. For example, here's a new hobby, tufting potentially, uh, rugs. Won't monetize this one though. Like this one's just for me. Um, I feel like my a lot of my friends have this joke of like, we just keep like turning our hobbies into parts of our business practice. And it's kind of nice to just keep something for yourself. So that's, that's good too. Um, and Sam says, you know, he, he can relate to what Amy said about getting excited about new things easily. Um, and yeah, keeping focus on one project can definitely be tough. So totally relate to that. Um, and we have, a, you know, we have a few minutes left in our stream, which I feel like just flew by today. Um, yeah. yeah. But is there anything that you guys want to add or that, that we didn't get to chat about today before we uh, head into tomorrow's stream? Taking a look at the chat. Oh, um, I wanted to call out something about Catherine that has inspired me. Um, Ooh, yeah. so Catherine, you talked about um, uh, over the pandemic having like a no new art supplies rule for yourself. Like you had to create using all the art supplies you already had. And I found that so impressive because I, I just love shopping for new art supplies, but I also love the idea of creating with what you already have. Um, Cause I know yeah. I, I have so many art supplies already and I don't need more, just the, the new ones seem so exciting and shiny. So I thought that that was a really cool thing that you did. Thanks. Yeah, actually this sort of the inspiration, I even forgot that I did that. Um, for a lot of the, the pieces that I have created in this like, all of this, you can tell, like, you know, this is a real scrappy piece of like linen that I just found, uh, you know, as part of like a shipment, I think I got um, some sheets and the sheets came in like a case. And I was like, I can use that instead of buying cotton muslin on the internet. And um, I canceled my monthly craft subscription box for a while because uh, I hadn't a backlog of crafts that I hadn't gotten to. And, you know, it's it's a good reminder that you can find creativity within the constraint and the materials that you have, so. Yeah, very true. I also love saving little bits of packaging like that, like the little drawstring bag that, you know, this little, little accessory thing comes in and then repurposing it for something else. Um, Oh, cool. So, you know, we have a couple of minutes left in our stream. Um, thanks to Sam for sharing our socials. Um, like I said, if you watch the stream afterwards, um, not when we're live and you have a question or want to stay connected, feel free to um, give us a shout on the internet. I am at by Alice Lee on um, Twitter, Instagram, and Behance as well. And that's also where I'll be announcing if we ever bring back doodle therapy in some capacity, whether it's a stream, a book, hang out, you know, oh, in-person meetup, that'd be really fun um, hmm. when we can do that. So yeah, oh, and uh, Kim in the chat says that they've been getting materials and old sheets from their Buy Nothing group. Yes, totally, Buy Nothing groups, just search for it on Facebook, I have been, buy nothing, like so many things just because we've been moving and we have like a ton of extra things. Instead of th throwing it away, you can just share it in those groups and someone will likely want it. I picked up a couple of Monstera cuttings yesterday 
from someone in the, the buy nothing community. So yeah. Um, yeah. So as we wrap up, um, uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining us to Catherine for showing us a little bit of your textile, um, fabric, you know, stitching process. It'll be really cool to see what comes of it. And you can check out her work, uh, at the links that, um, Sam posted. Maybe you can see the final piece that she ends up creating from this there. Um, and thanks again to everyone for joining us for our season finale of Doodle Therapy. We will be back with our final, final stream tomorrow. Um, and Amy will be streaming with us, um, doing the live stream from her computer and Catherine and Amy and I will all be hanging out again. So thanks to everyone for joining and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later. Bye.